We are here at the Calgary Wildlife Rehabilitation Society, and we're a not-for-profit wildlife rehabilitation hospital. So I'm Jenna McFarland, I'm Senior Wildlife Technician here at Calgary Wildlife, I'm also a zoologist, a marine biologist, and a veterinary nursing student. The only animals that we still have here who are considered to be part of the flood intake are our two beavers that we have. So we have two Canadian beavers, both about the same age. They came in on the same day. Their names are <laughs> Birch and Aspen. So that's what we've named them for now. Now the interesting thing about beavers is that they don't actually leave their lodges and become independent until about two years of age. So for us, we're looking at about a one to two year commitment with these guys, which is a lot. It's a lot of work for us. We're always emptying pools, refilling pools because they're semi-aquatic. It's a big job. We also have to provide them with a lot of food and a lot of trees. So they're growing really fast. They've got perfect health at this point in time. So prospect is very good. We really want to make sure that we grow them up um, unhabituated by people, which is actually really easy for beavers because they're not very friendly, they're quite aggressive. And hopefully we will find a good location to release them where they won't be interfered with by humans and where they won't cause any destructive damage to ranch lands and farmlands. Yeah, so Nick's just gonna bring us some little pieces of mouse. Okay, so the other day we were lucky enough to get in a northern pygmy owl, which is the smallest North American species of owl. They are very tiny little owls, very tiny little guys. They actually attack very large prey very impressive. So this little guy was actually found out in Red Deer Lake, uh, just south of the city near Pritis. A uh, lady noticed that he was kind of hanging around her deck and her bird feeder and then was started to get attacked by crows. Uh, magpies were kind of coming in. So he clearly was too cold to be able to sustain any flight so she brought him inside and gave us a call. So he's actually doing really well. He's all warmed up, he's all fed up and he'll be ready to go in a couple of days. We also have a female broadwing hawk patient. Uh, she came in a couple weeks ago. She was emaciated, really bad body condition, but uh, very good bone structure, no problems with that. So she's slowly worked her way back to health. Uh, the only problem that we have is that they're a migratory species, so really she should be down south by now. So we have a couple of options. We find a way to get her down south, which we're talking about options for that, whether we want to fly her or we can transfer her to another facility, or we keep her here for the rest of the winter and release her in about May. We have a new potential education animal. Uh, he is a juvenile red tail hawk and he's a light morph. And he had a triple fracture in one of his wings. So the bone was so shattered that it's not really something we can surgically put back together. But while he was healing and while we were getting to know him here and giving him the treatment that we could, we realized he was surprisingly docile for a red tail. They are notoriously not friendly and really high stress in captivity and he wasn't showing any of those signs. So he's been in here for a couple of months and we've been doing some training with him. He's being hand fed and he's been very responsive. He seems to like the attention. He's currently living with one of our other education hawks, Leto, who's a Swainson's hawk. They're getting along really well. We're really hopeful that he's going to be a great part of our education program. We like to try we don't try and keep animals here as we're not a sanctuary, we are a rehabilitation center, but sometimes rare animals, we come across rare animals that are injured and can't be released into the wild that have that particular combination of traits that makes them appropriate for education and long-term captivity. We have a chickadee who is a volunteer and staff favorite. What had actually happened is her cat had caught him in the yard at the bird feeder and pulled out a bunch of his tail feathers. She brought him here, which was a good move, um, and we had a look at those follicles, seeing if they're regenerating, which they are. So we're just going to keep him here until those grow back. Chickadees over winter uh, in climates such as ours, so he's not a problem for release. We just want to make sure that he's healthy enough to get away from other cats once we release him. But he's a great eater and has a beautiful song. He's really, he's a pleasure.